Yo, yo, guys, welcome back again today. Today, we're gonna be talking about John Robinson. John Robinson, also known as the Brown Condor, was born in Carabao, Florida in 1905. Robinson's original father would die when he was young and his mother would remarry to Charles Cobb. John Robinson and his only sister, Bertha, would go on to learn the ways of the world. Charles Cobb would go on to teach Robinson that the world in the current state of America was not fair, but he would have to be tough to get what he wants. The family would eventually move to Mississippi, and this is where Robinson's love for aviation sparked. Robinson, one day, would see a pilot landing in a barn nearby, and on that day, on that field, Robinson began dreaming of life in the skies. Robinson had everything he needed surrounding him. His family emphasis and importance of education would push Robinson even further towards his goal. Robinson would go on to complete his education at Gulfport High School for the Colored in 1919. This is where he developed a strong interest in mechanics and machinery. Robinson strongly wanted to continue his education, but at the time, African Americans were prohibited to continue their education beyond the 10th grade. So Robinson set his eyes on moving once more to Tuskegee, Alabama, where he attended Tuskegee Institute in 1921. He would go on to study automotive mechanical science. He also studied literature, math, history, and composition. In 1923, he would graduate from Tuskegee Institute and apply to the prestigious Curtis Wright School of Aviation in Chicago. Robinson would be denied every time, but this would not stop him from obtaining what he needed. In 1924, Robinson and other African-American pilots would form the Challenger Air Pilots Association to attempt to promote other aspiring black pilots. He would go on to move north to Detroit and Michigan. Robinson thought the north would be better than the south, but as he tried to obtain jobs in car shops, owners would deny him or give him lesser work. He also faced discrimination in normal day life in the north, but eventually he broke through. Robinson soon after would leave for Chicago and instead of applying once more to get into the school, he would apply to work as a janitor in the school. While working at the school, he would eavesdrop standing next to the class doors, acting as if he was cleaning and learned while on the job. Eventually an instructor would notice and Robinson became the first black student at the school. He would enter the school and graduate top of his class in 1931. One of Robinson's former fellow pilots, Cornelius Coffey, would help Robinson open the John Robinson School of Aviation in Robbins, Illinois. Becoming a proficient flyer, Robinson would become a community activist for black aviation. He believed that to demonstrate equality to whites, blacks had to excel in the world's most advanced field, aviation. Robinson would go on to generate interest in the young generation of African Americans, especially for poor black youth on the south side of Chicago. This push would pay off. In 1931, Robinson recruited and taught the first black class of female and male students at Curtis Wright School of Aviation. This would also make him the first African-American instructor in the school's history. This would land him as the leading African-American in aviation in the United States, and he would further promote black aviation in 1934 when he went back to Tuskegee Institute to convince the Southern or South's leading black educational center to offer aviation courses. In his mind, this would be the best place to spread the word of aviation to the new generation of black youth. He was successful, and this was shown by the Tuskegee Airmen fighter pilots of World War II. The famous Tuskegee Airmen of World War II would accredit John Robinson as one of the founders of their program and an inspiration to all aspiring African Americans of the era. This action would eventually pave the way for integration of the United States Air Force. Though Robinson accomplished many things for African Americans, he also cared about the well-being of blacks all around the world. He believed in Pan-Africanism and embraced the unity of all black people. Robinson would develop a strong respect and bond with Africa's last and only independent black nation, Ethiopia. Ethiopia at the time was ruled by Emperor Haile Selassie and was being threatened by Italy at the time. Benito Mussolini was on a conquest to take over Ethiopia. Robinson would announce that he would help against the war efforts against Italian forces. Robinson argued that the Italian invasion posed a threat to more than just Ethiopia, but to the bigger independence of Africa and black people worldwide. In 1935, Robinson would officially announce his intentions to join Ethiopia at a black business and community meeting held by the Negro press in Chicago. As word got around, Dr. Malako E. 
Bayan, the first Ethiopian medical doctor to complete his education in the US and Emperor Haile Selassie's cousin would learn about Robinson's qualifications and the announcement. He would quickly meet with Robinson and recommended Robinson to Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie would soon wire an official invitation and commission to Robinson. Robinson would go on to accept the invitation and in the same year, Robinson would be conducting pilot training at a training school near the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Robinson would depart Chicago and reach the port of Djibouti after a lengthy trip. He would then journey from Djibouti to Ethiopia by railroad, meeting Haile Selassie and being greeted in royal fashion and soon to hold a very important rank in Ethiopia. This would be Ethiopia's first air force and led by an African American. Shortly before when Haile Selassie first became ruler, him and his visor heard an explosion. A pilot from Trinidad had crashed, Hubert Julian, and this led to the new emperor finding another black pilot to teach his troops. Not taking this kindly, Julian would go on to assault Robinson at the Hotel de France soon after. This would lead to Emperor Haile Selassie to tell Julian to leave the country. Within a few months, the emperor would see the leadership and value of Robinson, and soon after, Robinson was appointed the commander of Ethiopian Air Forces. Robinson would work overtime at the headquarters and also worked overtime training pilots. He would work effortlessly to obtain additional aircrafts to strengthen the Air Force. He would even modify some planes to drop bombs. Most planes were weaponless and used for scouting, providing supplies, and transferring soldiers from Addis Ababa to Adwa. Robinson even flew as an active pilot, reporting back about Italian military activity at the Ethiopian border. The Italian invasion would soon happen the same year in 1935, and the Italians would outmatch the Ethiopian forces with numbers and experience. The Italians had one of Europe's largest air forces and bombed a town that the Ethiopians defeated the Italians prior to in 1896. Now, the Ethiopians had lost it again to the Italians. While the war continued, Robinson would fly the emperor to the front of the battlefield to rise morale of the troops and continue to perform scouting to inform Ethiopian leaders about Italian movement. He would also show brilliant thinking by only allowing aircrafts into hangars if repairs were a must. If not, he would paint them green and other earth colors and park the planes under trees. This was so the Italian Air Force could not bomb a hangar and destroy all the planes. Robinson would even get into dogfights with Italian aircrafts and earn the name the Brown Condor of Ethiopia. Fighting with all his might into the end, the Italians were closing in on the capital of Addis Ababa. With help being sent from Sweden and America only offering one aircraft to help, the emperor would tell Robinson to resign and depart the capital city by train before it was too late. With so many close calls on the ground in the air, Robinson was lucky to make it out alive. Robinson would return back to America, and upon his return, he received a huge welcome back from the country's black community. And he also had a minimal amount of media exposure as well. He would assume his aviation activities back in Chicago and soon would serve in the United States Army Air Force during World War II. Continually fighting fascist imperial expansion, Robinson would return to Ethiopia after allies in Ethiopia liberated the country from Italy. Robinson would become an aviation instructor with other African American technicians. He would establish a pilot training school, training over 80 Ethiopian aviation cadets to serve in the Ethiopian Air Force. He would also have a hand in establishing the Ethiopian airlines that we know of today, organizing the airlines under Prince Makonnen. Robinson would go on to train and supervise the pilots, Air Force veterans, and manage the airlines. Robinson would stay in Ethiopia, but one day a plane he was flying would crash, and tragically he would die in 1954 from the injuries that he received in the crash in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So yo guys, we learned about another man of African descent, especially in aviation. He has done a lot for aviation within America and in Ethiopia and Africa. If you are into planes, if you're into aviation at all, I love aviation and I actually have family that are pilots. And if you're into aviation at all, you definitely, definitely need to know this man. And if you're not, you still need to know this man. And yo guys, please like and subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you'll always get my videos. Add me on all my social medias, which are Afric Network, which is Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, and Facebook. Each one teach one. Yo guys, always stick together, always love each other, always learn from each other. And until next time, peace, one love.